Hey guys, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is rotate array. So in this question, we are given an input array nums of integer data type and we need to rotate the array to the right by k steps where k is a non-negative integer. So this is the input array given to us and k is equal to 3 and this is the expected output. Now let's take a look at these examples and see how we can solve this question. I'm going to show you two methods. The first method is using O of n space and the second method is using O of 1 space. I've taken the same example that I gave up. So this is the nums array and this is k. Here in this example, k is equal to 3. So the last three elements should be rotated to the right. So these three elements will be appearing in the beginning and these four elements will be appearing in the end. So in the first approach, I'm going to show you how to solve this using O of n space. It means that we will create a new array and store our result and then return it as the output. So after rotating, our array will look like this. So this is the output array and our expected result. So how are we going to fill our output array? Let's see the working. So we iterate through the input array from left to right. So the input array is starting from here. So we access that element and we have to put it inside its respective position after rotating. So once output position will be here. So how are you getting this index position? You can get that using this formula i plus k mod n i is equal to the index position 0 k is equal to 3 and length of the array is 7. So 3 mod 7 is equal to 3. So you add that element at the third index position. So add it there. Now you go on for the next iteration inside the input array. i is equal to 1. 1 plus 3 mod 7. 4 mod 7 is 4. So add it at the fourth index position here. Go for the next iteration. i is equal to 2. 2 plus 3 mod 7. i mod 7 is 5. So add that element at the fifth index position. Go for the next iteration. i is equal to 3. 3 plus 3 mod 7. Mod 7 is 6. So add it at the sixth index position. Go for the next iteration. i is equal to 4. 4 plus 3 mod 7. 7 mod 7 is equal to 0. So add it at the zeroth index and go for the next element. i is equal to 5. 5 plus 3 mod 7. 8 mod 7 is equal to 1. So add it at the first index position. Go for the next element. i is equal to 6. 6 plus 3 mod 7. 9 mod 7 is 2. So add it at the second index. And when you go for the next iteration, you reach the end of the array and you end the iteration and you get our final output array, which is the expected output. Now in this question, we don't have to return anything. You just have to rotate the nums array and nums array will be automatically returned as the output since the return type is void. But we have our output inside result. So we have to put it back into the nums array. So we iterate through the result array from left to right and add one element at a time to its respective position inside the nums array. So after adding the result elements inside nums, the output will look like this. Now let's take a look at the code for this example. Coming to the function they've given us, this is the function name and this is the input array nums of integer data type and integer variable k. And the return type is void, which means that you have to just rotate the elements inside the nums array and you don't have to return anything. Now let's take a look at the code for the approach using O of n space. So first I'm finding the length of the input array nums. So in this question, length of the input array nums is equal to 7. So length is equal to 7. I'm creating the output array result of length 7, same as the length of the input array. Now let's iterate through the input array nums. I will start from 0 till 6. So the element at nums of 0 will be inserted into the result array at this location using this formula, i plus k mod length. So this will happen for all the elements from starting to end and we'll get our result array with these elements. But we have to rotate the input array nums and we have our result inside this result array. So we move all our elements inside result array into the nums array. So again, I'm iterating from start to end. So this loop will put all our elements inside result array into the nums array. And finally, you don't have to return because the return type is void. Now let's take a look at this code. The test cases are running. Let's submit it and a solution has been accepted but this solution is using o of n space now let's take a look at the solution using o of 1 space now let's take a look at the approach using o of 1 space it means that you have to rotate the nums array itself in place to get o of 1 space so here you can see that since k is equal to 3 you have to get the last three elements to the front of the array because you rotate it to right and it will move to the front and we have to get the remaining elements from the beginning to the end. So how are you going to do that? Now before starting our approach, 
we have to do a check if k is equal to the length of the nums array for example length k is equal to 7 and length of the nums array is 7 so in the first iteration the last element will be placed in the beginning one place to the right this is 2 in the third rotation last element will be here in the fourth rotation last element will be here in the fifth rotation last element will be here in the sixth rotation last element will be here and in seventh rotation it will come back to the original place and if k is equal to a the last rotation will be rotating to the first index position and whenever you rotate the array for eight times or for one time it will go to the same index position that is the beginning so instead of doing so many rotations if k is greater than length of the array then you make k is equal to k mod length so if example k is equal to 8 8 is greater than 7 k is equal to 8 mod 7 which is equal to 1 so if you rotate k is equal to 8 times or 1 time you get the same output so this is one check you have to do before solving the question since we have to get the last k elements to the beginning and the first remaining elements to the end so it is a three step process how we are going to do that in the first step you reverse the element from start to end so after reversing the array the array will look like this note that we are rotating the input array itself you are not creating a new array so the nums array after reversing the elements will look like this so this is the first rotation where you rotate the array from the beginning 0th index till the length of the array till the last index position that is 6 so in the first reversal the first reversal will take place between the starting index and the ending index and this is the expected output so you notice some similarity between our first rotation and the expected output so this part and this part is matching you have to reverse this element so let's do it in the second reversal you have to reverse element between that range so after rotating the nums array for the second time the array will look like this so this is the nums array and after the second reversal the range of the second reversal was between the first index position and k minus 1 k is equal to 3 k minus 1 is equal to 2 the second index is here so range is between 0 to k minus 1 and now we have almost our output array in the expected format and now we have to reverse this range because here you can see 1 2 3 4 is the expected output we have 4 3 2 1 and after the final reversal our array will look like this so in our final third reversal we have reversed the array from range k to length of the array that is 6 so k was 3 right so we start from 3 till end of the array 6 so 3 to 6 we reverse the array and now we have our final output which is matching to our expected output here now let's take a look at the code for this approach using o of 1 space so first before starting our logic we do our check if k is greater than the length of the nums array we substitute k's value with k mod length and then i'm going to call the reverse array function we're going to write the helper function now the first reversal will take place from index position starting from 0 till the end of the array so all our elements will be reversed and the second reversal is for the first k elements the index position start from 0 to k minus 1 so if k is equal to 3 k minus 1 is 2 so 0 to 2 so 0 1 and 2 these three elements will be reversed and the last reversal is for the last half of the array for the last k elements so k is equal to 3 till the nums dot length minus 1 from k to end of the array we reverse it now let's write a reverse array helper function so this reverse array helper function is also a void return type because we don't have to return anything we just have to reverse the array elements we're going to pass the input array nums in the start index position and the end index position which are going to be two integers so we are going to run a while loop where start is always less than end so until these two pointers meet we run our while loop and reverse the elements between them now we swap our elements using a third variable i'm going to name it temp so for example if start is pointing here and end is pointing here we are going to swap these two elements so nums of start is 1 so temp will have 1 now for that example and now swap nums of start with nums of end so nums of start will become nums of end so nums of start now has 7 and nums of end is also 7 so we assign nums of end with this temp value so temp is having 1 right so 1 will be assigned to nums of end so nums of end as 1 so we have swapped the two elements now we increment the start pointer and decrement the end pointer for the next iteration 
that's it this is how you reverse the elements between start and end and this helper function reverse array has been called inside the rotate function three times between our required ranges now let's try to run the code the test cases are running successfully let's submit the code there you have it our solution has been accepted so the time complexity of this approach is o of n and the space complexity is o of 1 that's it guys thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video